the Leoninians who and the communist elites who were on power without having a wide uh, um, a vision about dealing with the past beyond uh, the ostracism of their political opponents. And uh, what happened when they arrived on power? Uh, well, their discourse changed. Uh, nothing was really done with regard to the communist crimes. We had like three indictments in the period 96-2000. Uh, and um, well, the decommunization discourse uh, started to diminish. Why? First of all, because there were like a misunderstanding between the historical parties and their governmental part, uh, governmental partner the Democrat Party in what concern dealing with the past. Because if at a discursive level the historical party wanted a rapid uh, decommunization, uh, the Democrat Party was opposing measures like criminal prosecutions and like illustrations. But more important, I believe that um, this, the discourse of decommunization was replaced by the discourse of reform in the context of economic crisis and for the Romanian society, while well, dealing with the past in this period became a secondary issue. Uh, um, not that it was a real issue uh, all the time. Uh, okay, but uh, in fact the political mistake of the trials of communism became quite small and therefore the attention of the historical parties on this aspect um, diminished uh, until disappearance. Um, I will want to look now to the civic actors and I will start to tell that uh, well, starting with 1990 uh, civic groups like um, uh, Group for Social Dialogue or Civic Academy militated in Paris for what they were calling a trial of communism. But what happened is that this, this uh, civic organism, um, they militated in a very generic and very global way without um, uh, without uh, looking to precise uh, actions. And uh, although, for example, they denounced the extermination, the torture, the imprisonment of hundreds of thousands of people, uh, the juridical action they actually undertook was almost uh, non-existent. Uh, for example, this group who weren't preoccupied neither with the abrogation of the 88 amnesty, uh, neither with the well, the changement of the criminal code in order to, 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 to prosecute and they didn't lodge penal complaints. Uh, so in fact what, was, what happened is that uh, their uh, revolt uh, well, against uh, the fact that the communization and uh, um, dealing with national justice wasn't done in Romania remained at the discursive level. Um, and I, I believe that one explanation is also the fact that this, um, well, these groups were coming from humanistic uh, intellectuality and um, well, they, they preferred to militate for a global condemnation rather than to judicial actions also because they didn't have, um, they didn't have a legal uh, background. Okay, and uh, lawyers, in fact, were legal scholars, for example, were completely left out of the debate. And uh, in Romania, it was impossible to constitute a group uh, with a coherent legal and political uh, strategy in what uh, concerns uh, dealing with the past. And, well, just an example, the announcement of the 1988 amnesty was asked in Romania officially only in 2006 uh, by the final report of the Presidential Commission for the Analysis of um, the Communist Dictatorship in Romania, and the application of international law regarding crimes against humanity well, started to be requested only in 2007. So, uh, also, okay. uh, also uh, another problem is that, for example, uh, association the associations of former political prisoners, they lodged only two collective complaints uh, in what concerns communist crimes, one in 99, another one in 98. So, well, there were a lot of penal complaints lodged to the prosecutor, 
but uh, there were individual and they didn't were backed by an organization. And what happened also with this uh, penalty claim is that they were very vague. They weren't indicating victims or they were offering like an entire list of victims only with the name, without the surname, without uh, the date of birth. And they weren't pointing to uh, uh, presuming uh, prosecutors. And uh, more than this, for example, the, um, the, uh, the associations of former political uh, prisoners, they split in the middle 90s. Uh, well, because they were coming from different political uh, backgrounds, and what happened is that, well, they split in two associations, and these two associations, not only that they didn't work together, but they competed each other, and if they were counseling uh, and denouncing each other's actions. Um, so in order to conclude, I will I will stress that, well, besides the nature of the Romanian communist regime, which is a very important explanatory factor, um, I believe that the reproduction of the former political communist elites had an important uh, part in, uh, um, well, in this uh, lack of criminal justice in what concerns communist crimes. Uh, but also, also uh, the fact that in Romania we didn't have a strong civil society able to, to uh, mobilization and requirement to demand an action event to allow us to curfew activism well, instead of focusing on judicial actions. And at the end, it's in fact a question that I would like to, to rise on is that uh, from the Romanian case, and not only when, when we look to all, all the countries, uh, well, we cannot wonder about the balance between national and international law. And uh, the Romanian case confirms the hypothesis that well, many researchers uh, already formulated that in, an absence, in the absence of an international system of control and sanction, state actors are free to respect or disrespect international law and to use it only when it serves to political uh, interest and legitimation. So thank you. This was it. to obligate the Romanian president to declare officially that the Romanian communist regime was a criminal one and to apologize to the Romanian people for the wrongdoings of the past in the name of the Romanian state. The court, though, dismissed this action, arguing that there has to be found a solution in a historical and social context and the justice system is not the right way to address the problems Procured, created by the communist regime. So, the court declared itself not competent <coughs> for this kind of questions, and in the same time, it also gave a very general answer to the question what role can and should the justice system play in the process of transition and dealing with the crimes of the past? Um, what, we have the impression in this case that the judges they didn't want to uh, they, they didn't want to have anything to do with this historical questions. And as already in the speeches before many times was argued that the dilemma of transitional justice is uh, that we have to 
deal with very huge complex historical phenomena and they are very difficult to bring into legal structures. If we look at the criminal law, then this becomes even more visible and even more complicated as the, the limits of criminal law are, are quite strict. So in the following, I want to uh, explore how criminal law is used in the process of transition in different countries and ask what are the main problems of criminal law. Um, in general, if, if we look at different European countries that have experienced the, the transition from a totalitarian to a democrat uh, state, then we can observe that criminal law is not the main tool of dealing with the past. Well, as I'm from Germany, and the German uh, example is interesting, I think it's, it's a special case. Germany is indeed an exception in this respect. After 89, there have been approximately uh, 75,000 cases of investigation against approximately 100,000 persons. So here really we have a huge number of, of cases in Germany. Even if we look then in the end at the statistics, uh, there were not so many people convicted. There were open to criminal cases against 1,300 persons and 70, uh, 750 of them were convicted in the end. Uh, but still, even if, if the number is smaller in the end, still we can say that in Germany criminal justice was an important tool of dealing with the past. But uh, as I already said, the German case is a special case, uh, not only for this huge number of cases, but also for, uh, for the special situation that there, was, there were two Germanys. And so that the Western, Western Germany could, could help or could, was very involved in the process of transition. 